Hey, my name is Mike P. Nelson, uh, the director of uh, Wrong Turn, and you are watching Slasher Prepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Prepper, and welcome to another interview. Today I'm going to be interviewing Mike P. Nelson, director of the latest Wrong Turn movie. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so glad to have you on the show. Oh man, this is going to be great. Yeah. So uh, my first question was, of course, Wrong Turn has wrapped up now. Um, do you have any new projects coming up? Uh, so I'm writing a couple things right now. Um, one, uh, just kind of going through the rewrite stage, um, but uh, that's that's pretty fun. It's a, it's a we'll, we'll call it a, a UFO chase uh, movie, which is, is is kind of kind of exciting. And then um, I have another one that's a um, like a, a Christmas uh, thriller horror, um, holiday horror, uh, which I, I have a, a soft spot for. Um, Black Christmas is just, the, the original Black Christmas is just one of the greatest, greatest, creepiest, squeamish uh, movies uh, ever. And so this is kind of, uh, kind of my love song to, to that, so. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then to go back to the film that just came out in theaters, uh, what was it like filming Wrong Turn? Oh man, um, it was uh, it was incredible. I mean, it was a it was a rush for sure. Um, it was a challenge. Um, we uh, you know uh, it was a twenty six day shoot, like nonstop, a uh, lot of overnights. Um, you know, in the woods at three a.m. Um, you know, <laughs> running through, covered in blood. Uh, doing prosthetic effects shooting guns it, it, i mean like then we were in these tunnels for four days where he's like you're breathing in all this dust and this smoke and it was just like so it was uh it was not um there was nothing glamorous about any of it <laughs> right <laughs> but you know honestly like i don't i personally I, I filmmaking isn't the most glamorous thing in the world it just really isn't um you know, I think, you know, people see one side of that, um, uh, you know, award shows or, or movie stars. And um, I honestly don't know if I would uh, enjoy the filmmaking process if it was all that. I love the, the grimy, the grit, the getting, getting your hands dirty um, kind of vibe, you know? And, uh, and so that's what this was. Like, this was balls to the wall, um, you know, shoot it, shoot it at the hip, like run around the woods, killing type of filmmaking hard work yeah yeah for sure awesome um and what was uh, what are some of your own favorite horror movies i can see the texas chainsaw massacre poster in the back that one uh it's a classic oh, yeah. yep yeah so uh definitely that one um uh i love um audition uh it's one of my favorites uh i love uh um, Monster Squad, um, <laughs> uh, The Thing, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna, th I'll throw this out there just because I've, I've been throwing this out there in some of the other interviews, uh, uh, Temple of Doom, which I feel like, you know, oh, I'm yeah. a huge Indiana Jones junkie. Um, it's, it's in, in my opinion, it's like the best trilogy ever. Um, and yeah, and and and, you, and uh, Temple of Doom being the one where Indiana Jones goes to hell, and <laughs> um, just is so so much fun. Um, you know, Twilight Zone, uh, Green Room. You know, all you know, all of uh, Jeremy Saulnier's uh, stuff that that he's been doing over the last years is just so so cool. Um, yeah. Awesome. And are you also a fan of like the more? Uh, like I mentioned, Maniac Cop and Frank Nook earlier. Are, are you also fun of those ridiculous uh, oh, kind of horror good. movies? Uh, so I got um, so I got a bunch of uh, as you can see behind you. I also got my VHS collection. Oh yeah. So you know, yes, I got you know, you know, Pumpkinhead. You know, that's one of my favorites. I love Pumpkinhead. Um, Pumpkinhead, Home Sweet Home, Eaten Alive. Um, <laughs> I mean. Um, you know, you could go back all the way to like the, the 50s and 60s, you know, uh, Day of the Triffids. Um, but 
But then you know you got you got a freaking classic on VHS. You got uh, you got Twister, which I, I fucking love Twister. Like, dude, I'm telling you right now, like, <laughs> plenty plenty of those. Like, it's it's all good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, those are all good ones. Um, and then over here, I have some more like random questions, uh, not really yeah. movie related. Um, if you ruled the world, what would it look like? Oh man, seriously, um, I. Uh... I would probably not be in power for long <laughs> um, um, because I have a weird brain. Um, but I would hope that I would be, I would hope that there would be, now this is going to sound strange coming from, coming from a guy who loves tons of killing and horror films, but um, you know, uh, a world where there's some compassion <laughs> if that, you know like yeah. uh um you know granted i love i love sitting myself down in a dark room and watching some good old-fashioned killing flicks but um you know when it comes to when it comes to real life um you know we got some issues and i think it'd be nice to you know to 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 find what that that common ground is with people and um and see if we could uh, could make something work better <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah. Um, oh, oh, and I, and I have to I have to say we would bring back video rental stores. Oh yes, we would be way better there, off. There would be them. there would be government funding for video rental stores, and yes. and 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 they would and they would be amazing. Yes, well that's uh, that's a bit of a more realistic answer because um, <laughs> yeah. the, the other day I re, uh, I uh, interviewed Cheney, one of your yes. uh, colleagues, basically. Um, and he said it, it would just be a big haunted house, which is cool, but <laughs> this is more realistic. So cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah. um, and then about yourself, if you could change one characteristic about yourself, what would you change? Um, characteristic. Um, I think... I would want to, I tend to overthink sometimes. Right. And I think I would, I would like to have a switch that when that happened, I could like, it'd be on my body. I could just like turn it off and then that would just go away. I'd be like, no, this is what we're doing. Right. Now I sort of do that right now when I catch myself, but I don't catch myself a lot of times either. So it'd be nice to be able to like remove that, uh, that piece. Oh, yes. Yeah, if only we're that easy. I know, gosh. Yeah, personally, I'm I'm really working on being less uh, judgmental. Yep. Like often, but but I do the same thing now. Like whenever I'm in the bus or something, and I'm just judging someone for no reason, like they did nothing to me. Like why? Like that's just the thing with with anyone. I I would say. It's um, it's 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 a really it's a really dark part of human nature. Yeah. It's, just, it's 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 unfortunate but it but it's it's reality you know yeah yeah because often when you really think about what you're judging them for you're just like it's the same you point a mirror at yourself you know like you've been in the same position and it's it's just so true so yep absolutely that's 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 good that's i mean fuck i mean that's what we talk about in this movie (laughs) oh really yeah, in one wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's all about that kind of stuff. It's all about judging people before you get to know them and, and how dangerous that could be, so. I still need to see it, but I've heard nothing but great things, so I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for you to see it, man. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll, have to, you'll have to tune into that because that's, that's one of our themes for sure. I certainly will. Um, and then where do you hope to see yourself in 10 years? You know... This is a, I love this question because um, when I graduated, uh, I graduated uh, with a, I graduated college in 2005, um, went for filmmaking, got a BFA in filmmaking. And I remember, I think it was, I think it was the school that like pushed us to like ask the same question. Right. Where do you want to be in 10 years? And I remember leaving school um, knowing full well that once I was done with college, I'd be working in a grocery store, the same grocery store that I worked at in high school. Um, 
but I said to myself, in 10 years, I want to make a Hollywood movie. Like, that's what I wanted to do. Um, I always kept it in mind. And I actually, it's so funny. Um, it was maybe just a few months ago. Uh, my wife and I were cleaning um, our basement. And I found some old pieces of paper and I found the piece of paper that I wrote that on. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was really, I was like, wow. Because literally, I think it was 10 years and change or just maybe under 11 years, or maybe it was just 11 years. I was able to make uh, the domestics um, with MGM. And so, you know, you make these sort of goals, these goals, and at the time they seem very unrealistic. Um, but if you're true to yourself and you, you say, you know, you know you want this and you make that your goal, don't think that it's too crazy. If you want it, just say it, say it, write it down. And, you know, it becoming a reality for me um, really opened my eyes to that fact, you know what I mean? Like, it was just kind of like, oh my God, this can work. And so I, 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 I ask people that same question. I, I, I teach a, a class at, at the college that I graduated from, uh, graduated from. Uh, I teach visual effects uh, there. And, and, and um, you know, that's a question that, you know, I love asking students. I love asking, you know, new filmmakers, you know, what do you want to do in 10 years? You know, and I think it's kind of like, you know, sometimes they'll ask the question and it'll be a little bit like, realistic you know or it'll feel very practical i'm like no 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 no. like what do you want you know what i mean right uh, and so yeah so uh 10 years from now now i'm gonna ask and now i'm gonna uh, answer your question uh, <laughs> uh, so that this is the long but i, I yeah. talk a lot and i know people are probably gonna just be like, shut up my god <laughs> um, uh but in 10 years um man uh you know, I uh, I would have I would love to be able to uh, to have directed um, at least um, two more films, um, and uh, you know, if I'm gonna stay on the same track and, and just talk filmmaking wise, um, I'd love to be I'd love to do to be a showrunner like on on a, on a television show or or a limited series or something. I think that'd be so much fun. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll look back at this interview in 10 years and, and that has happened. <laughs> It'd be cool. <laughs> For sure. Um, and then my final question, which is sort of similar. Um, what's the ad best advice you can give to younger filmmakers? Well, actually, let, let me ask it differently. Um, I want to be a filmmaker myself. I yep. want to direct movies and I work in a grocery store now. So it's similar to what you have done. What would you say to your younger self working in a grocery store wanting to be a filmmaker um well i'm just gonna put it out there and just say what i did and and, I, and i'm gonna say this because i i feel like this is why it worked for me um you got to make stuff as hard as it is to make stuff you have to make stuff um you also have to make stuff without the thought that because I'm, I'm going to make this because it's going to get me somewhere. As soon as you start making stuff to find fame or to get recognized or this is going to be a step in my career, that's when things start to get dicey. Not saying that that can't happen. I'm saying that in my personal journey, uh, whenever I made stuff that I liked that was for me, because I wanted to make it and I wanted to just put my story out into the world. Those are the things that got me noticed. Um, as soon as I started writing a script, as soon as I started shooting a film or a short film or, or, or sometimes do, it was doing a commercial um, and I thought, this is gonna be my big break. Like, this is gonna get me to that next level. I'm like, yeah, all right, you know, um, it failed. It just did. And that was, um, that was a wake up call. Now, I still go through that. There are still those moments um, as a filmmaker now, now with, now with these two features that I've been able to make where, you know, it's almost like this thing that kind of pulls you back in that mindset. Well, gosh, you know, I just did domestics. Now I, people are gonna, people are gonna be wanting to hire me. Nope, that wasn't the case. I did domestics and it was, it was a struggle after that 
to get another movie. You had to fight, you had to hustle. Um, and you got told no a lot. You know, as a director, you, you go to auditions, you audition to, to get the job, you know, you pitch. And um, uh, damn, man, like, you know, I think going back to, to, to you know, where, where you are at right now and where I was, you know, now 14 years ago or whatever it is, um, I'm telling you what, man, the best thing you can do is make stuff and own it own 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 what you do like don't don't try to make something because it's somebody else might like it make it because you like it because your voice your vision is what's going to attract people to you and that's just the reality um so yeah i hope that <laughs> honestly like you know that's that's where that's the path that i i took and at times it was hard. And at times I felt like nothing's ever going to happen. But again, as soon as I let my guard down and just said, I'm going to make this and I stopped trying to make something for somebody, that's when something happened. It's what happened when I did my short retirement of Joe Corduroy. I did that because I loved it. Then somebody came and said, I like this. I found an agent. Then I did the domestic short film. I did it because I loved it. I didn't think anybody else was going to see it. I was just going to make some films. I was going to make some shorts, make a little series that I was going to put on Vimeo. Somebody saw it, said, we like this. Would you like to do a feature? Like, what? You know, um, <laughs> do what you love, um, do what you're passionate about and keep creating. Like, just don't stop. Get your friends together, make movies, write movies. Who cares if it's bad, just make it. Because awesome. you might find, you might make something good, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I made plenty of bad things. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, some great advice, and uh, I'll definitely put that to use. Awesome, man. Yeah, is there uh, anything you would like to add to the uh, interview? Um, gosh, uh, well, I mean, first of all, thanks for like, thanks for having me. Like, this is super cool. Like, this is honestly, this has been the I've I've been doing tons of interviews over the last few days uh, for for the movie, and. Um, this has been the most different interview of all of them. And awesome. uh, I want to thank you for that because it's been really fun to like to answer questions. You really threw me in some of those. Like I had to think about it <laughs> uh, because I'm thinking, okay, here's some, we're gonna, we're gonna sit down. We're gonna start talking wrong turn. Oh, what would, what would it look like if you ruled the world? <laughs> I'm again. <laughs> <laughs> um well, i think that's i think that's really cool i think that's a i think you got a good style i think it's it's unexpected um but you got some some really fun questions and and, and this was this is great this is a lot of fun yeah thank you so much for uh for your time absolutely man good luck with the filmmaking thing um yeah. and uh you know feel free you you know you got you're connected with me on instagram just reach out yeah. if you have any questions okay yeah, sounds good. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, uh, by the time this video is up, um, Wrong Turn will be out on DVD and Blu-ray tomorrow. Yes. So uh, everyone right. go uh, pick it up tomorrow. Um, it'll be online everywhere and maybe in stores. But uh, I don't know if you want to go to stores right now because you need to wear face masks anyway. So yeah, it's well, true. again, true. It's thank you so much for your time and uh, to everyone Roger. watching. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Take it easy. All right. All right. Oh, it just seems to be today the light. You again. You again. I know you're coming back.